SQL databases are great for transactional workloads, but things can get messy at scale when you've got lots of transactions trying to interact with the same data at the same time. Select for update is a SQL command that allows you to effectively lock any rows returned by your select query until the transaction that that query is a part of is committed. For example, imagine we've got this table of bank account information called accounts, and our database has sent this transaction to update the balance of account number one. Notice that we're using a regular select statement here, not select for update. Now, there's nothing wrong with this transaction. Let's call it TX1. It will process and update the row just like it's supposed to. However, imagine we're a global bank and this is a corporate account. There might be hundreds or even thousands of queries trying to interact with this same row at more or less the same time. Here's how that could play out. TX1 begins processing, but it doesn't lock the row when its select statement is executed because, again, it's not select for update. While TX1 is still processing, TX2 comes in and begins processing against that same row. TX1 finishes processing. Now the value of the row that TX2 was updating has changed. This causes TX2 to fail, requiring a retry. Failing and retrying is less efficient than just putting TX2 into a queue to wait until TX1 is done processing. So let's update our TX1 query to use select for update. Now, when TX1 starts processing, it locks the row. So when TX2 comes in, it knows to wait and begin execution only after TX1 has been committed. Generally speaking, select for update is going to be more efficient when you're dealing with a lot of transactions. But it's worth noting that it does depend on the type of SQL database that you're using. Some databases like Postgres also support weaker transactional row locking in select for share, which functions essentially the same way, but locks the relevant rows only for updates and deletes. And not all SQL databases even support select for update. For example, SQLite doesn't because it locks the entire database while a transaction is processing. Now that's obviously great for maintaining consistency but it massively limits performance at scale because transactions can't be processed concurrently. So if you need to maintain strong consistency while also maximizing performance with transactional workloads, how you write your query and the database management system that you choose are both important. If you've got transactional workloads at scale and a need for strong consistency, check out CockroachDB. It was built from the ground up for transactional workloads at enterprise scale.